Okay, so we are often asked what is PIM. So PIM is passive intermodulation distortion. This um, phenomena occurs in communication systems and is a form of modulation that occurs between different signals and results in a distortion that actually deteriorates the signal and the communication system as a whole. PIM is effectively the product of two frequencies. In this example that I have over here, we have frequency one and we have frequency number two. This is just an example of GSM, but it applies to LTE, 5G, and various different technologies. What happens with PIM is that when we combine two frequency bands, we have a product of this, which results in a, a combination of the two frequencies. Example, the third order modulation in this case would be two times frequency one minus frequency two. Or it could be two times frequency two minus frequency one. The result of this is that a different product is created, which ends up somewhere else in the frequency band. This product basically becomes interference. If we use this GSM as an example, you would be transmitting on your base station in both frequency one and two, but you would be actually flooding your input or your receive end of the base station with this distortion and your C2I is degraded. So why is this of concern to us? Um, as I mentioned earlier, when you have two signals that are being combined, the effect of this is an induction of signal in the receive end of the receiver. You're basically inducing a new signal where your receiver was actually expecting um, reception from the, uh, from the other party. If it was a cell phone network, it would have been the cell phone user at the other end. This floods your input stage of the receiver and drastically reduces the quality, throughput and speech quality of your call. Just as an example, using a um, cellular uh, network base station together with a cell phone, but this could actually be for just about any type of technology where you have two or more uh, frequency bands being transmitted by your radio. So what happens with, um, with a base station as an example is you may have a non-linear point where either in your, your coax cable, it could be in your connectors, it could be in your antenna, um, and what effectively happens is with intermodulation, the signal is reflected on a different frequency band at different points in the system. It could be at this point over here, it could be at the antenna. So at all of these points where you have non-linear connections and other different type of problems in your system, you could have a reflection of signal. The problem is that as your uh, mobile user is trying to communicate with the base station, this signal and these reflected signals over here compete with each other and hence the deg degradation of signal. PIM manifests itself when there are non-linear components in a system together with high power. So typically you'd see it in base stations, in, uh, um, in broadcast systems and so on. But generally PIM is not a concern when it comes to lower power systems. So when you have a Wi-Fi router a uh, normal LTE route, I think PIM is of generally no concern to us and should not be worried about too much. If you have different technologies on the same base station or different uh, radio equipment, then for example, LTE can affect uh, 5G, GSM can affect UMTS, so all of these technologies can influence each other with PIM. Uh, what we have found in the old days when I used to work on GSM is that uh, we actually found it in call setup success rate statistics on the base stations where when people tried to make calls they were actually not allowed access to the network and that is because of the uh, flooding of the receive interface on or the receive stage of the radios. So we picked that up statistically and we were able to repair many of those base stations enhancing the performance for the public. So in conclusion, PIM is very important when it comes to high power systems, like broadcast, like base station uh, systems. But when it comes to normal household appliances, 
then PIM is, is not necessary. What you can do is um, just check that if, you, if your equipment is uh, below 10 watts um, and most routers are, then uh, don't worry about PIM. You'd just be paying extra for an antenna that isn't necessary. Uh, however, if you do have PIM applications where PIM is very important, for example, distributed antenna systems or base station antennas, please check with your supplier that those uh, antennas are PIM compliant. Um, you will see that there are some antennas that we have that are, that are PIM compliant, but um, those are very specific made to order type of antennas. So please do speak to us about that and we'll get back to you on that topic.